We're able to create as many database as we need. Within Microsoft SQL Server, there are two types of database that you would see. One are the system databases, which comes by default with Microsoft SQL Server. And within it, it contains information or data relevant for the functioning of Microsoft SQL Server. The second database will be the ones we create ourselves, and that will contain information or data that we need or that we deem fit. Within the database we create, for instance, we can have a basketball database that contains information about different teams, and that will be represented within a table. We can also have information of the basketball players, and we can have information about referees as well. We can also have another database that contains information about different types of foods, customer's information, and also the customer orders. To create a database, the syntax is as simple as just type in create database followed by the name of the database and you end that with a semicolon. Go ahead and launch Microsoft SQL Server and we will start creating our databases. So I have Microsoft SQL Server pinned to my taskbar. Just click on that to launch the SQL Server Management Studio. And there is a previous video that I created to walk you through Microsoft SQL Server. If you've not watched that, I would recommend that you do so. I'll click on connect to connect to the database engine. On the left, we have the object explorer. And the first folder we see is the database folder. And this is where all of the database created will be stored. If you click on the drop down menu, you have the system databases. And we have four different system databases the master database, model database, MSDB, and TEMDB. Just going to collapse that. I'll click on new query. And we'll start by creating our first database. And like I said, the syntax is create database, followed by the name of the database. And we'll just call this database restaurant. And you end that with semicolon. I'll highlight the query and click on execute. Below we see that it says commands completed successfully. Let's create another database. Create database. And we'll call this basketball. Why not? We'll end up with a semicolon. Highlight that and click on execute. So now it says again that our request has been successfully completed. To be certain that our database has been created, let's go to the database folder. Click on the drop down. At the moment, we don't see the database we just created. All we need to do is refresh. Click on databases and click on the refresh icon. And now we see the two databases that we just created. Now you can go ahead and create one more database and the name of the database would be computers. Well, all you have to do is type create database, then computers, end with a semicolon, I liked, click on execute. And then to make sure it's um, been created, just click on database, refresh, and you should have your restaurant database created. 
because there are several databases within the SQL Server, we need to indicate which database we intend working with. The syntax to select a database is use followed by the name of the database. So if we want to use the basketball database, we type use basketball and the semicolon. The same thing, use restaurants, semicolon, use computers, semicolon. The box at the top left corner indicates which database we are currently in. Right now, it shows that we are in the master database, which is one of the system databases. To use the basketball database, type use basketball followed by semicolon. Put a T there. And then when you highlight and you click execute, now we notice that this changes to basketball to indicate that we're now inside of the basketball database. The same way, let's say we choose to now go into our restaurant database. You can just go ahead, restaurant, column, execute, and now that changes to restaurant. Let's try and switch now to the computers database. Use computers followed by semicolon, execute, and now we're in the computers database. Another way we can confirm which database we're working with is to use the function select db underscore name. We would open and close bracket and with a semicolon. Then when we click on execute, it shows us that we're inside of the computer's database. What if we decide to delete the database we just created? Well, that's also very easy. The syntax to delete our database is drop database, then the name of the database, and then with a semicolon. And by the way, every time you write a SQL query, you should end that with a semicolon. Now, within SQL Server itself, it is possible to run the query without adding the semicolon to the end, but adding the semicolon indicates that you have completed that query. So I would recommend that when you do write queries, and we'll be doing a lot of this, uh, just know that the way to tell SQL Server that you've completed writing a particular query is to end with the semicolon. So to drop our restaurant computers or basketball database, all we need to do is, again, just type drop database and the name of the database. Now, it's important that you know that once you drop or delete a database, it cannot be retrieved, except if that database has been backed up. Let's go ahead and delete our basketball database. To do that, just um, come down here, drop database and the name of the database. And the semicolon, execute, command completed successfully. Now it's still showing up here and that's because our server isn't refreshed yet. So if we do it, click on database and refresh, now we see that it's no more there. Let's do the same thing to computers, drop database, computers, Execute, then with a refresh, that's gone. And finally, let's delete our restaurant database. Uh 
highlight, execute. And now if we refresh our database list, now we only have the system databases left. Um, I would say definitely you don't want to delete any of this databases. 